All right, welcome back, everybody. Segment four for economic geology. Um, how's it going, Mr. Ben? How are you? Well, it's going all right. So we got some learning targets today, don't we? We do. Uh, learning target for this segment is you can evaluate the cost and benefits of mineral extraction, including engineering, economic factors, social, and environmental factors. So. Should we get started? Yeah, so they're going to look at some of the things they saw last time, like, you know, putting those together to figure out if um, it's going to be worth it to, like, get the minerals and things. Exactly. And then some of the concerns also, like the effect of, of that mining process on, on everyday life. Good point. Really. It's not just money. It's how it affects the people who are there and globally, too. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, so some limitations and concerns. Uh, some engineering factors. That, uh, that we should probably talk about first. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we talk about the technical factors, can't access deep deposits. What do you think we mean by that? Well, Mr. Wad was talking about how they can go down like a mile's worth of cable to get some minerals. That's the deep sea, right? Right. Yeah. So maybe they don't access some parts of the ocean because it's too deep and it would cost too much money to run the cable, too difficult with currents and things. Yeah. Maybe there's places like that in the earth where you'd have to get too much of the mountain away to get at it, um, or we don't have a device that you know can get there efficiently enough. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, economic, so not economic yet to mine asteroids, so that's a pretty interesting um, fact there. Well, that's um, like rare earth elements that are out there that they know, but it just would cost too much to get them and get them back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we have to think, how much does it cost to actually obtain those, mm -hmm. whether it would be in outer space or whether it would be here on Earth, and is that worth it to then sell that product or that mineral later on? Does the kind of the ends justify the means there okay. in doing it? Um, inability to process or separate some of the minerals, and this is kind of going back to that ore question, right? Mm -hmm. Because we talk about some... Uh, ores mixed in with uh, with other rock and we have to separate those and that's where we get that gang or those tailings mm -hmm. right but sometimes it just costs too much money to separate them and it costs more than what the mineral or the ore is actually worth so then it's really not economically feasible to do that so maybe like something stuck with something and it's too difficult too much money to like separate it exactly. or like oils and shale and yeah. but to squeeze it out of the shale they can't figure out how to do that economically yet. Yeah, they almost have to they have to spend too much or use too much energy to get the oil out of the okay. shale. So it's you're taking so much energy to get that oil energy out and it's just an um like an energy negative. If our kids could figure this out, they could change the world and become the next like billionaire, right? They could. And I hope they would keep either myself or you yeah. or Mr. Baldwin and Mr. Wad in mind when yeah. they when they do that. Remember us. So remember us. All right, so then you said energy cost is greater than the, the value of the ores. And that's what you yeah, were just saying. Yeah, and we just kinda of talked about that too. Just it just takes more money to try to get that. Exactly. All right, moving on. All right, limitations and concerns continued. Now we're looking at the environmental mm -hmm. factors. That doesn't look very pretty. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And it was kind of touched upon a little bit uh, in the last segment, especially where we talked about the mountaintop mining, and mm -hmm. we talked about different things that are destroyed during that process, mm -hmm. or the strip mining too as well, where we just kind of strip away the entire earth. So we know that there's going to be other impacts on other people, um, animals, the environment, etc. that we also have to consider. So uh, waste produced in the extraction. So taking a look at that, what do you think... What, the, what kind of waste is produced sometimes? Um, well, you were talking about gang. Maybe one of the minerals that is gang might be like a hydrogen sulfide or something. Mm -hmm. So they take a valuable ore out of it, and they're like, I don't need this hydrogen sulfide, this rock rich in hydrogen sulfide, and they kind of make it a pile. Yeah. And you get acid rain eating it away, and then you could get like sulfuric acid or something leaking into the groundwater that affects the poor people, something sure. like that. Yeah, or it affects people's homes. Right? I mean, it just uh, leaches into the groundwater and then eventually can contaminate that. And sometimes these aren't really seen for years down the road. It, is, so, yeah, it accumulates over time. Exactly, exactly. Reclaiming the mine area. Okay, so you can go and you can take the top off of a mountain, but you know, can you feasibly put it back? You know, um, if, you, if you're gold mining and you take all the trees, then um, can you really put the trees back. That's a little easier, but I don't think they can put the top of a mountain back. No, I don't think so either. So that's a limitation. Yeah. Uh, uninformed about uh, natural pollution caused by weathering of mineral deposits. And that's kind of what we just talked about, right? You know, we have these deposits of tailings or gang, 
and um, you know it rains we would get sulfuric acid as just an example and that would then leach into the groundwater and possibly cause a contamination but um, that uninformed I'm a little confused about that well let's say you're the mayor of Zeesville Okay. And um, I'm I'm a miner, and I'm hey, I want to get some gold from your property. I'll give you 25 percent of what that I sounds get. Sounds good to me. Oh yeah, I see your town's kind of poor. Okay. Yeah. Now you ask, you give me you ask me for an environmental impact um, a survey, so I give it to you, and you look at it. Oh, it's pretty safe for my town. Sure. I neglect to let you know maybe you know that some of these tailing piles can actually leak, and like you said, over time, or or maybe I'm not. I haven't started mining, and I'm, I'm not even informed enough. I'm not even sure, and I didn't pay somebody to do studies to find out. So you're getting money, I'm getting money, and then all of a sudden, before we know it, now there's problems neither of us saw. Yeah, and then you're probably long gone by that time. Yeah, that could be. That probably. sometimes happens, unfortunately. Yeah, it does. All right, pollution caused by the use of extraction of the substances. So uh, that's definitely a concern and something that uh, in this mastery check coming up that, uh, that you're definitely probably going to consider. Right? As we actually remove stuff from the ground, there's a lot of machinery and equipment and everything that goes along with it that uh, is also not um, good for the environment. So, so we get, talk about that too. So you got to pump that out of the mine, but if it's not perfect, it can cause pollution. Yeah, definitely. And then pollution concerns must be global. Underdeveloped countries cannot bear the burden. So you mean you can't expect one little country who um, we're taking all these minerals from to then, it's their responsibility then to fix everything. If the rest of the world is like, like taking their minerals, we can't expect them to like fix it all up if what they have is going to everybody else. Everybody who's getting the minerals and getting the benefit should help them. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I kind of thought about it a little bit different in terms of um, a lot of times when they regulate mining, you know, mm -hmm. like the United States regulates mining probably more so than a third world country. And mm -hmm. third world countries are just like get it out of the ground and sell it as fast as possible. Okay. So they don't follow the same like procedure and protocol that mm -hmm. we would in uh, like a developed nation. Oh, so a lot of times they can cause more environmental problems, like even in their surrounding area, mm -hmm. that uh, that they just don't really, I mean, care about almost. Oh, so you like know? in that favorite show on mine on Friday nights, the they use methods in the jungle um, gold that they don't, they're not allowed to use exactly. in the U.S. So what you're saying, if I'm hearing you, is if they use the same procedures that keep the environment safe in the U.S., they should use that everywhere to keep yeah. everywhere safe. Okay, exactly. I understand. Exactly. All right, so the economic factors that we've already kind of uh, kind of touched upon. Mm -hmm. And going back to, now we'll, well, I guess we'll start with the first one here, the market forces determining prices. This is a really interesting one. Mm -hmm. So um, in our in our TV show that we that you and I both watch, Gold mm -hmm. Rush, actually a lot of those miners were trying to mine gold in the 80s. Right. But the price for gold was so much lower than what it is today that they actually had to pull so much more gold out of the ground. Mm -hmm. And if there really wasn't that much gold there they just wouldn't even try mm -hmm. but gold now has like um, it's like 20 50 times more than what it was back exactly. then so there's almost like a mini gold rush going on back in Alaska mm -hmm. because it's just worth so much um, than than what it was before mm -hmm. could it be devices like this too that there's certain minerals we use in our smartphones and our other devices that before we never had a need for them and all of a sudden now yeah. we've got a huge desire to have these yeah yeah exactly and because the demand is so high then the price for it is gonna increase as well okay and no global consistency and taxation of mining companies that sounds like what you were saying where maybe in another country they don't have to pay a certain tax that might go to help reclaim the area where in the United States they may have that tax worked in automatically on the front end to make sure that things are restored. Yeah. So there should yeah. be a, a maybe a global tax that every miner has to 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 pay and that tax then would be used for reclaiming the area and something yeah, like that. Yeah, or for any kind of research or something oh, like that point. to uh to or in increasing the yields. Yeah. Land controls and rights. So in other countries maybe the person who controls the land and their rights might not be the same. And in the U.S., um, aren't there even some places where sometimes you own what's under the ground and sometimes you don't? Yeah, I think so. I'm not yeah. actually sure about that. Yeah, I think there's controversy about that. So maybe if we had that standard where it's 
same everywhere, then we could make regulations to make things better and safer, and you know that would help. Yeah. All right, and then no regulation of mining and industry uh, on a global scale, and that just kind of goes back to what we've been talking about mm -hmm. with a lot of these, with a lot of third world countries, is that just they'll mine it for as long as they can to get all of it out, and then move on to a different area, mm -hmm. and um, sometimes that can be like problematic for the market too, and and the economy if people are producing a lot more of it and maybe in an unsafe way and then other countries may not be able to compete in that same market with the regulations we would have uh, here. So um, we don't have really like a standard uh, like regulation globally that we've actually already mentioned. So Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, um, we got limitations and concerns, mineral production versus GDP. Now GDP, that's kind of like how much the a country, it, that's their their money coming into them? Yeah. Okay. So certain countries get more money from minerals than other countries. Exactly. Okay. So the U.S., which is really big, mm -hmm. um, we only get, uh, what, less than 2% of yeah. our... Well, I understand Japan because they're small, so we must have other, other ways that we make money exactly. besides minerals. Exactly. And then if we take a look at Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. they're pretty high, 25 to 50%. Mm -hmm. Bolivia and Peru are above 50%. Okay. Uh, so if, if there was some kind of a, um, let's say a, um, how do I want to put like that? Like a regulatory effect, some, some type of restriction or control? Yeah, or anything that would like change that market for that mineral that they're mining for or mm -hmm. that, uh, or anything, right? And then that would really have a dramatic effect on their economy because that's a huge portion of the money that they actually make. Um, in those countries. So if we tried to fix this, we might have to try to have a global group that looks at it instead of one major group that looks at it to determine what that would be to make it fair for everyone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right, the uh, mastery check. I like uh, this one, Mr. Z. Yeah, I like this one too. So if you could imagine, the city of Park Ridge is planning on opening a mine on Main East Campus. I wonder what they would mine for. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe there's gold there. Could be. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what would be the impacts, the impacts of creating this mine? Be sure to include both positive, positives and negatives, economic impacts, jobs, social impacts, environmental impacts, and engineering obstacles. So the students should try to think based on what they've seen. If, if um, all of a sudden we could mine right here on campus. What kind of mining they would do okay. by one. Okay. Right? And how it would affect the people like that live around here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that might be just from the people who live in the neighborhood, but also jobs. Yeah. Okay. Um, the environmental impact. You know what they might need to do to what, try to keep it safe, keep it clean, keep sure. people from getting hurt. Yeah. And would it affect them in a negative way? Mm -hmm. You know, with the mining being here on campus. Okay. Right. And then engineering obstacles, those are some of the things we talked about as far as like um, getting at the material. Yeah. All right. Well, it exactly. sounds like it's open-ended. We're going to see some exciting things on this. Yeah, I think so too. All right. I'm excited to see what I read. Oh, All right. um, did we talk about how they should uh, publish this material? How are they going to get it to us? Um, probably on a Google Doc and then just uh, post it up on your uh, e-portfolio site. I think that'd be a great Under thing. minerals. Mm -hmm. yeah. That'd work. And that's it. Thank you very much, everybody.